So in my barbecue video, I mentioned that the uh, end of the hole plug in that barrel popped out. So I ran over to try and find a piece of metal, found this full of wheel parts and screws and stuff just sitting in water. It's a nice looking cast iron pan. So, we're going to stick it in a bucket, soak it in water, see how long it takes to uh, freshen it up. Today is the 16th of October. We're going to try a Hawks water test again. Now I've seen on the internet a lot of different videos talking about water and potatoes, talking about water and molasses, and, and it occurs to me that it might just be the water in there solution. Uh, this is all I'm putting in, just, just water. Had some comments in the last video that they didn't think it was, that's all I was putting in it. It's just water. Like I said, there's other internet solutions out there that people swear by, but if they're mixing it with water, I have a feeling it's the water that's doing the uh, rust removal. Not the potato pieces, not the molasses, and all that kind of stuff. I haven't even really wire brushed this or nothing. I'm just going to put this in to help loosen it up. I may pull it out in a week, wire brush it, and then we'll see. All right, there she is. This is going to be day one. Start your timers. Um, I don't know how it works when it freezes. <laughs> I didn't ask Hawk that. And uh, this week and all next week, we're supposed to be down to like 26 degrees or something at night. So who knows? But we're going to find out. And I might have to chop this out of a block of ice <laughs> to free the rust. All right, we're back. It is the 24th. You can see that. Sunday. So not quite 10 days. But, uh, let me take a look at this guy here. Look at that. He just wipes right off. I'm going to take, uh, just like I did last time. I just have a nylon brush, like you use to clean your tires with. I'm going to, uh, scrub that up a little bit, and then, uh, we'll come back and see what it looks like. Alright, got a scrub to rinse down. Let's see if I can get the light just right. You can see most of it looks great. This right side still has some rust. If it dried, you could tell um, a lot better. But pretty darn good. Outside is flawless. And let's see, it says 11 and a quarter, 11 three quarter inch skillet made in the USA. But I don't see any markings. There's a C stamp on the handle. And it looks like it says 10 on this side. So, honestly, don't know how old this thing is or not. But uh, we're going to change the water out and we're going to let her go another five, seven days to see what happens. Yeah, let's take a look at it. Looking pretty good. It is Friday the 29th. We'll take that uh, nylon brush to it. Let's see what it looks like. All right, take a look. This whole left side is nice. It's all down to metal. You can see it's still got some work on the right side. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a different method. But I'm going to let this dry and see what it looks like dry. All right. Get in there a little detail. Uh, once it dries, it uh, all the big stuff is gone, but it still has a thin coat of surface rust. And uh, the back looks really good. But instead of keeping it in there, what I wanted to try, um, obviously I'm going to take some salt and some oil and use the salt as an abrasive um, and clean this up before I actually season it a couple, probably several times. Um, my rust videos pop up similar rust removing type videos on YouTube and uh, there was a gal on there that was using an onion to take the rust out of her skillet so I kind of wanted to try that before I uh, just oil and season it and so I'm going to chop that up till it's nice and juicy and then I'll bring it back all right now all I'm doing is using the bottom of a cup to squeeze this out I suppose I could put it in a uh, 
and a microprocessor, um, maybe even with a little water. It's um, it's the I think it's the silicon acid. It's one of the, it's the acid that makes you cry uh, when you get into onions. So put a glove on. Um, I burned the crap out of myself the other day, so uh, I don't get any of this rust onion juice in my uh, young skin. But um, I kind of let it sit on here and work it into the sides, and uh, I'll bring you back after it sits and I wash it out. All right, you can see that actually worked kind of good. Still got some rust on there. Uh, the problem is the juice just started to dry up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop the rest of this onion up. Um, I might rub down the outside a little bit, but uh, I'm going to burr it up with some olive oil. have a lovely onion oil emulsion and I'll smear that over there and hopefully the oil will uh, keep it on the surface a little bit longer mmm tasty alright it's looking really good next we're going to uh, salt scrub a little oil Alright boys and girls, forget the water, sorry Hawk, forget the onion thing, I'm going to show you how to get it like this. Stay tuned. Alright, I know the skillet video is pretty much done, but uh, I went ahead and uh, degreased it really well with a SOS pad and some uh, detergent soap, and uh, once that dries, once you get the oil off it, you can see there's still a little bit of rust on here just a little bit so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this up uh, with the apple cider vinegar left over from the other project and see what that does all right I'm actually gonna use the same apple cider vinegar uh, that I used for the other test that's what it looks like after that first rod was in there but I have to get another one and maybe fill the top. I'll go buy some more uh, upside vinegar and just bring that to the top level. All right, it's kind of a bubbly mess. Um, let's see what we got here. This was a lot thicker, heavier rust, and I didn't do anything but put it in there. No pre prep or nothing. But uh, let me pour this out and get the wire brush and see what we can do. Alright, use the, uh, the brush on it a little bit. We're just using cheap Walmart apple cider vinegar. Also it attracts bees I see. A <laughs> um, little brushing and all that scale came off. I did go rinse this one because I'm curious to see once it dries if it gets that same orange tint uh, like the other one did but again didn't do anything to this just sat it in there. Unreal. So now let's see what this thing looks like. Look at that, it's almost down to metal over there. And uh, let me take the uh, brush to it and see what happens. <laughs> almost a brand new pan. Obviously, down to bare metal, we'll have to season it. You can see just right now, as it's drying, it's starting to get a like an orange tint to it. Uh, you can also see where I had it right at the lip on this side. And my garage isn't exactly level, so there's a line over there when there's about a quarter inch. So, I don't know. I'm going to uh, take the wire wheel to it, um, see if I can get... All this came off really easy with the brush. I want to see if I can get this black off, so I put a wire wheel on here. Uh, if not, I'll probably soak it some more, and I may soak it to get the outside down 
to regular metal as well. Um, if anything, I, I kind of want to just make it match and I'll get that lip done. All right, this is going to be a real test. Here's a uh, carbon steel blade that got some real deep uh, rust patina on it to the point where this is as clean as I get it, you know, easily with a uh, quick scrub on the stick tang. And I was, uh, I was going to make a knife out of it, but it's a little bit near the, uh, the edge here. But we're going to soak that in there for a while and see what I can do. Um, I'm also, in order to get that edge over there, I'm going to have to add just a little bit of water. Bring enough of that apple cider vinegar up to that edge. And we'll leave that for a while and then uh, I may actually just dunk the whole thing in. Alright, pull it out in the sunshine here. Hopefully you can see. Uh, I just used this guy to hold it down, but you can see it's going to come out pretty clean too. Um, this is diluted uh, with almost one to one. I put another gallon of water in instead of buying another gallon of apple cider vinegar. Uh, just to try and get that extra lip over there done and decide just to submerge it for another day, see what happens. Let me pull it out, clean it up, and we'll take a look. Hoping that comes out on camera. That thing is just silver. Now for the Pearl Resistance. Still got some, uh, probably just some elbow grease that I'll use to get a little bit of that black in the middle off. But there is a little bit of black left on the bottom. That's probably just because this was actually sitting on the bottom, not floating in a solution. I should have probably turned this upside down when I had it submerged. But that is good enough. All right, I want to show you how the knife turned out. Now, one of the things you can do to pre-patina uh, carbon knives is use a high acid content, like vinegar, mustard. But as you can see, it got all the black out of the little scribe marks, and I'll put in a picture. Obviously, the damage is done by the rust, but the whole thing has a nice gunmetal, flat gray finish, which I really like, and that'll prevent a lot of rusting from happening in the future.